Public Defender. The Public Defender is a public servant employed by the community and responsible for giving legal aid without cost to any person who seeks it and is entitled to it. It is his duty to defend those accused of crime until they are found guilty by law. No man can escape the consequences of his past. This is the story of two men who lived a lie for over 15 years before the past caught up with them with terrifying impact. Add to this $72.64 proceeds from the rummage bazaar, $57.50 from the pie and cake sale, and $183 even from admission fees, and we wind up after expenses with a net profit of $291.38. Mr. Chairman, all I want to say is, well, we all know how hard Al Milne has worked to make this the most successful carnival the 4th Street PTA has ever had. It's taken most of his nights and weekends for the past couple of months, and, well, uh, I, I just think we ought to show him how much we appreciate it. Thank you, but in spite of what Mr. Parole might think, it wasn't a one-man job. Everybody here did more than their part. Well, now that we've all taken our bows, unless there's some further business, uh, this meeting's adjourned. Oh, Mrs. Milley, congratulations. You should be very proud of your husband. Thank you, I am. Organizing this whole operation on a budget of less than $50. Al, I need you at the machine shop. I wish you'd reconsider my offer. Well, I'm afraid I can't. But a foreman's pay means at least $100 a month more than you're getting now. Mrs. Milley, can't you do anything with him? He's turned me down four times. Al, you never told me. Well, it didn't seem necessary. I'm happy right where I am. But you said yourself it's a dead-end job. We've got to think of the future. I know. I appreciate the opportunity, but I'm not sure I could handle a the job. There's only one way for him to find out, isn't there, Mr. That's Sandy? right. Oh, please, Al. If only for Sandy. All right. Well, it looks like you've got yourself a new shop foreman. Good. I think you'll like it there, Al. It's a great place to work. There's one more thing. Every so often, I'll call on you for a quick estimate of labor and material cost. Figure out a few ways how to keep them down, and there's no telling how far you can go in this business. Well, I'll do my best. Right now, I'd better get back to the shop. Oh, just a moment. You uh, might as well fill this out while you're here. Saves time uh, when the bonding man comes. I didn't know I'd have to be bonded for the job. Well, we have to keep the insurance people happy. After all, when I'm not here, you'll be handling bank deposits and things like that. I see. Uh, it's just a formality. Uh, take your fingerprint, sign your name a few times, and you're in business. Food. I'm just not hungry, I guess. If you don't eat your vegetables, you won't get any dessert. Will he, Mommy? Finish your dinner, Sandy. Oh, what's wrong? Why don't you tell me about it? There's nothing to tell. But you've been jumpy and upset for two weeks, ever since you started the new job. I said I didn't want to talk about it. Now, leave me alone. <coughs> Mrs. Milne, is your Al Milne? I'm Al Milne. Police officers, turn around. All right, you'll have to come with us. But you can't arrest him. He hasn't done anything. Would you get his coat, please? Oh, no way. This is all wrong. What has he done? Mrs. Milne, we have an out-of-state fugitive warrant for your husband, dated June 7, 1938, under the name of Alfred Martin. But that's not his name. 1938? Why, that's over 15 years ago. There must be some mistake. Fingerprints don't lie, Mrs. Milne. 
Your husband escaped from police custody over 15 years ago while on the way to the state penitentiary to serve a 10-year sentence. Now, would you get his coat, please? Albert Milney was taken to Central Police Headquarters where he was booked, mugged, printed, and bound over to the municipal court. The grim secret he had kept for more than 15 years, even from the woman he loved, was a matter of public record within a few short hours. No physical contact. Regulations. You have five minutes. I'm sorry. Honey, are you all right? Hmm, wouldn't be so bad if I could stop worrying about you and Sandy. Oh, we'll manage somehow. I left her at Mrs. Perot's until I get back. She, uh, she sent you a kiss. You didn't tell her where I am. Well, I had to. She was bound to find out sooner or later, and at least this way she knows it's all a mistake. You'll be back home with us soon. Now, it's no good, Marianne. I ran away from a ten-year sentence. They won't be satisfied until I serve it all. Plus another ten for escape. Oh, please, Al, don't talk like that. I'm sorry, I haven't the right to say anything. Why don't you say what you're thinking? I'm a liar, a fraud. I have been from the start. You're my husband. I love you. Don't you understand? It wasn't right. I didn't have the guts to tell you the truth before we were married. It wouldn't have made any difference. It still doesn't. I wasn't guilty, Marianne. No matter what they say, I wasn't guilty. Time's up. It's all right, honey. Mommy's here. Everything's gonna be all right. I tried to get it off. I scrubbed and I scrubbed, but it wouldn't wash away. Oh, honey, that's no reason to cry. It's only a picture. It can't hurt us because we know it isn't true. But everyone is saying it. All the kids. I hate them. Oh, no, Sandy, you mustn't. They don't mean to be cruel. They just don't understand, honey. I'll tell you what. There's some peppermint ice cream left in the refrigerator. Why don't we go in and have some, and then we'll decide what to do about the old picture. I don't want any ice cream. I want my daddy. Oh, Mommy, why don't they let him come home? He'll be home, honey. He'll be home. Hello, Mrs. Melney. Good evening. Oh, Mr. Singer, Mr. Peroli, come in, please. Well, we'd like to, but we won't have time. We still have plenty of calls to make tonight. Yeah, a lot of people think this isn't right, what's happening to Al. So we got up some petitions. Yes, look here. Over 50 signatures from my store alone in less than six hours. Yeah, that's just a start. I've got another one going at my shop. And we haven't even begun the door-to-door -door canvas. I don't know what to say. Everything looks so hopeless, but now all these people willing to help. And why shouldn't they? Al's been doing things for other people ever since I can remember. It won't be easy, Miss and Milne. We'll have to get at least 100 signatures to do any good, but we want you to know that we'll keep trying right up to the hearing. Well, good night. It'll be all right. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> 